the wisdom that peruses every activity of God the wisdom that gives God his feedback the wisdom that delights the heart of the father it is this wisdom I'm presenting we understand how the words are chosen why because we are doers of the word we are masters of the word we are poets of the word I pray to God that your ministry will not be in the outer court but you will come into the place of the very presence of God but by reason of Christ who has opened the way we have free access to God and we are not afraid therefore he said come boldly before the throne of grace that you might find grace and help even in a time of need and most of us who think that prayer is a means of just taking something taking something we have never got to the place when we understand that prayer is work when we pray we work when we pray we when we pray we form when we create we make things happen and you know what in the secrecy of this work god rewards you openly. now get set for the good word of god with pastor Obed. of it always a blessing there are times your prayer voice will not change anything quiet quiet allow God's sudden silence to drum the noise of the challenges of your life I want to know God. Be still and know that I am God. What God will you know? When you are still, the God of silence, you will know him. He is silent. You now begin to immerse yourself in this silence of this almighty God. He is not displaying anything. In that place, you are having a koinonia in silence. People, I want to illustrate something to you. In the room of silence, that is where great fellowship is experienced. Lovers are not lovers because they open car for the other to sit down. That is attributional love. Lovers are not lovers. When at a naming ceremony, your husband sprays cash on you, that is attributional love. True love is when everything is not working. And your wife and your husband stands by you when you are silent. They understand your language. They will not come and disturb your silence. They join you in the silence of your divine experience. Men, there are times you don't want to be talked to women. We don't need all your noise. Hey, hey, shut up. Can we just be silent for a moment? Man, there are times your wife doesn't need your screaming. And your authority figure can you just be silent can we have some quiet in this place there are many men there are many women who are tired the bible says to live in a house with a nagging woman it will be better that you live on the rooftop people when the house is noisy go to the rooftop the rooftop is higher it is a call to a higher realm. Can we learn some silence? Can we have some silence? The Bible said, Job's wife looked at the toil of Job, spoke to him. Nothing was moving. Job's friends, read the book of Job. They also came and added to the noise of his wife. Nothing happened. So Job maintained his disposition of silence. I was silent before God. Then his friends thought to themselves, let us join this Job in his silence. Who are your true friends? When there is no description of money about you, but the potential of riches is inside your belly. When all the cars you will give away are not here, but they believe you carry it. And so they will sit by you. They seem to have a conviction that you are their priest. 
and there is a reason for which you are quiet. They know the scriptures. They can quote it at you. But friend, keep quiet. Quiet! Who left you? Quiet. Who is destroying your reputation? Quiet. Man of God, you don't need to answer all your social media critics. Quiet. Hey! The nation you are in, they say you are not from God. Quiet. Where you work, they say you are a thief and a robber. Quiet. Everybody thinks you will amount to nothing. Quiet. Cook it. Cook it. Cook it. I am not fighting you. I hand you over to my God. <laughs> you will not need to fight in this battle. You're going through a period of a hard time, a breakdown in marriage and at home and at the workplace. Everything, the screaming sound and the screeching sound of motorbikes and, and of all the locomotive trains and all the vehicles around you. Listen, the world was made to offer you nothing but noise. But you can create your own inventive tool. Listen, that motor that is making noise, it was bet out of the silence of somebody. That aeroplane that flies with a noise, it was bet when somebody was silent. Make a contribution to your world. This whole world uh, was not created out of noise. The world came out after God held himself in silence. Ah, he was quiet. He was still. The God of silence, the root of all costs. The God of silence, the root of all costs. Before a thought was vocalized, it was in the mind of silence. Before a thought was vocalized, giving a sound of vibration to bring about an effect, it was in the mind of silence. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. What is he trying to say? He's not trying to say that it began with the word. He's trying to say that it began with God. Who had the word before he spoke it out. In the beginning, Charlie, there was a word. Oh, that word had a source. It was with God. That word, its fabric was God. God was in silence. God was in silence, folded arms, musing. What will I prove to myself and to what is about to happen? What would I show in all of this? How will I be pleased? God was silent. Be still and know that I am God. You will not need to fight in this battle. No more fighting. One quad chair. With the appropriate chair. Jemume Rade. Don't leave it for his attribution. Leave it for the quenching power of a sudden sound of silence. You will not need to answer everybody. You don't need to mind everybody. You don't need to answer everybody. There are times, look at men like this. Watch them like Jesus watched them and say nothing to them. They don't deserve you scooping into the ignorance of their noise. Silence. You know their end. They don't know their end. And you know your end. And they don't know your end. You didn't hear what I said. You know their end. They don't know their end. You know your end. And they don't know your end. Shut up. Quiet. Do you know the sweetest thing is how silence has a sound. The accumulation of the concentrated sound of silence is a voice. The accumulation of the concentrated sound of silence it's a voice. So do you know what? Can we talk here? 
Can I talk to CCI? Can we talk? Are you sure you are ready for this? I want to show you something. Are you sure you are ready for this? Can you see me here? So they were in the boat. And their God was asleep. <laughs> the sleeping God. Jesus. He was asleep. The storm came. He was asleep. The winds blew. He was asleep. The waters were boisterous. He was asleep. The question of all ages. Careless not that we perish. Haven't you felt like that before? As if your God doesn't care. He cares. He doesn't want to waste time. He wants all the attributions of all the contrary gods of the waters and the marine world to show their power. What happened? Jesus asked the waters and the wind, have you done your best? Is that all you can do? So you couldn't sink this boat when I was in it. If you wanted to do something, you should not have poured water in the boat. You should have soaked the boat in the water. You didn't hear what I said. This is the sea. Don't be pouring water in the boat. For my disciples to be pouring the water back out. Sink us. But when Jesus is in the boat, you will go afloat. The boat cannot sink. The boat cannot sink. You will go afloat. He is silent. But he is present. Hear me. He is silent. But he is present. The silence of God is not the absence of God. He is silent. But he is present. He is right there where you are. You are not married. The noise of everybody saying you are crossing 35. So it's getting to you. His silence does not mean he's absent. In the midst of silence, he is present. The doctors say, this sickness will kill you. And you are wondering, where from this cancer? How? I tell you. His silence does not mean he's absent. He lifted up himself. Took a 360 degree around the boisterous storm. And you know what? He didn't say, but disappear to shore. That would have been a better option. But you see, he doesn't run away from a fight. You see, me, where I come from, we don't run away to declare victory. We meet the fight. Eyeball to eyeball. When I see a fight, something rises inside of me. There is no way. Be high, be tall, have muscles. Me, you will never make me run away from fighting you. You can carry a gun. You can be the next Goliath of our generation. You can mash me. You can beat me. Do you know the joy? I fought you. My joy is not in who won. My joy is in the fact that when you slapped, I slapped you. When you hit, I hit you back. But you know what? Jesus will not make the boat to vanish. He looked around. He said, they called for it. We will not disappear. I have power. To make this boat disappear to shore. But if I do that, they will think I am like one of them in the midst of the fight. He stood up and said, Disciples, you will not need to fight. 
Leave it for me. And do you know what? He didn't fight. He took the ability of harm. Like that day when the devil's ability to harm will be taken from him. He took the ability of the storm to drown. He removed it. Listen. And said, Peace be still. And there was great calm. And the disciples said, What manner of man is this? People! That the winds and the storms do you know what it means for the waters to be boisterous? If you study a little bit of tectonic plates you will know that it is an actual earthquake inside the seabed. That is what makes boisterous seas. And do you know what makes the sea to be boisterous? When the tectonic plates shift and the magma of the earth begins to come up, then it will heat up the waters. Do you know what God was trying to show? There are four elements the wind, the water, the earthquake, and the fire. He is still God. Can I talk to you? Yeah. Now in our generation, we are not looking for the God that answered by fire. We are looking for the God whose silence catapults all the creation into his experience of silence. Yeah. I tell you, if you are God, can you in silence make everything silent? If you are silence, can you make everything silent? If that is true, who outlived his noise in this world? Tell me, Buddha. Mohammed, Mahatma Gandhi, Krishna, who? Anoche. Don't add comfort to it so that it can sound nice. Because when you say Mahatma Gandhi, Buddha, Krishna, why do you add comfort to Anoche? <laughs> who? Can make everything join him in silence because that's where everything started from it is the fountain of all things and of all he says i have not as yet answered the question when god was silent where were you and what were you but i have brought you to the precious realm of god's silence whenever you are silent Say to yourself, Lord, I join you in the realm of your transcendental being. The realm where you transcend the creator. I join you in that experience. In that place. We sing a song like this. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus?
Bible, expanded Bible, new American Bible, revised, new revised standards version, anglicized, voice Bible, 1 Kings 19 verse 12. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 12 from the Wycliffe Bible. And after the stirring is a fire. Mm. Not in the fire is the Lord. Mm -mm. And after the fire mm. is a hissing of thin wind or breathing softly. Mm. There is the Lord. You want to know him? That is where he lives. That is where he resides. Amplified. Expanded Bible, quickly, just give me all those ones. Amplified. Expanded Bible, everybody, just look for it. He alone can't do this. And after the earthquake, a fire. Yes. But the Lord was not in the fire. Yes. And after the fire, a sound of gentle stillness, mm. a still small voice. New American Bible Revised Edition. New American Bible Revised Edition. After the earthquake, mm. fire. Mm. But the Lord was not in the fire. Yahweh was not in the fire. After the fire, a light, silent sound. Mm. A light, silent sound. Elijah had shown how the Lord was in fire. But truly, he was not in the fire. His essence is not that one. Expanded Bible. New Revised Standards Version Anglicized. Voice Bible. Voice Bible. Expanded Bible. New Revised Standards Version Anglicized. Voice Bible. Voice Bible. New Revised Standard Version. And after the earthquake, mm. a fire. Mm. But the Lord was not in the fire. No. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. A sound of silence. Sheer silence. That was where the Lord was. In this place, Moses saw the provision of living water and the glory that passed by in the law. The prophet experienced the fire that fell from heaven and also saw all the manifestations of the glory and now in silence. Somebody will say, so then what? Read for me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, the verse 4 to 5, chapter 18, verse 15 to 18, Malachi chapter 4, the verse 4. 
and I'll drop it. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. The Lord talked with you mm. face to face mm. in the mount mm. out of the midst of fire. Hold on. <laughs> the Lord talked with you face to face, but nobody has seen God. So that was an attributional experience. God spoke with you face to face. So how will God say, nobody shall see my face and live? In the essential face of God, no. Nobody had that, ever experienced that. No. Five. Verse five. Yeah. I stood between the Lord mm. and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. Wow. For you were afraid by mm. reason of the fire. And went not up into the mountain. Oh, so I know what happened to Elijah. Watch this. Every attribute of God should only take you into the essential reality of God. But many people, they are afraid of this God thing. What if we die and there's no God? So they stay in the attribution theory of God. Of the fire, the wind, and the earthquake. The display of God's expressions in the physical and the metaphysical realm. That's what they do. Moses said, I stood between you, but you are not ready to go up into the mountain. Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration. His face showed fire. But that was not what God wanted. The cloud came. Then the Bible said a voice came out of the cloud. This is my son. Fire. Wind. Earth. Water. Clouds. Attributions of God. Can we go deep into the God essence? And experience him for who he is. Move. Chapter 18, 15 to 18. Chapter 18, verse 15 to 18. I love this. The Lord thy God. Your God. Will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. He will raise up a prophet from the midst of thee. Of thy brethren. Of your brethren. Like unto me. Like unto me, Moses. And unto him ye shall hack it. And you will listen to him. Hear I this. So, when Moses was speaking, he said, one like unto me. And you will hear him. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah were there. And God said, hear him. And him you will hack him, not us. Carry on. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in horror, in the day of the assembly, saying, You are desiring of the Lord your God in horror, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me See this great fire anymore, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. 18. I will raise up, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I'll put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Do you know something? I don't know if Christians can take this. But I would say it anyway because I'm correct in the spirit. We didn't need Jesus. It was the error of the nation of Israel. We didn't need Jesus as an intermediary. God wanted everybody to come to him to know Jesus. I didn't say we didn't have to know Jesus. We didn't need Jesus as an intermediary. It was when the nation of Israel was afraid to die and could not come so much as close because of the fire. God wanted them to come through the fire. To come to him without any intermediary. God said, Moses, you couldn't finish up this work. I have to appoint another intermediary. Who will now bring them to the Father? No man cometh to the Father but by me. That would not have been written if the nation of Israel 
went together with Moses to see God. Because they would have been in the rock and would have experienced the Christ. Not of his grace, but of his glory. If you can take that one. I know somebody is just going to take this thing that I said. And say that we don't need Jesus. God bless you all. Carry on. Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. In Horeb, Moses had to stand on Christ to see Genesis and all the things he wrote. Do you know why? Can I talk to you? Without him, nothing was made that was made. So if you want to know the history of all that was made, you need to stand on him to know how it was made. That is how Moses wrote the book of Genesis. How will you know the inception of this world? Try as they may of all contrary religions. They claim a father married a son, married a wife, and the father died, and the son replaced him and married the wife mother. This is going to lead me into the Imago Day to settle the discourse of the mother-child consort of all ages. You will not know how delicate this information we are about to look into means. Hear me. All religions claim that there was a son of a father who married the mother upon killing the father. Is that not what most people have made of Christianity? Where they have put aside father God and have slain and killed father God? And have raised father, son, sorry, God, son, and have married God, son, with his spirit. You don't understand what I'm saying. The father in Christianity didn't die. No, he didn't. He's still alive. Mother, Holy Ghost. Carried the son and brought him into this world. With the son intact, the mother intact, and the father intact. There is no death of the father. There is no mother-child consort. And there is no constant death of the son for an annual reviving. He died once and is alive forevermore. <laughs> yes. That is where the God explanation begins. How did Moses explain God and his works as creator standing on Christ? So who is best to explain God? Christ. He went into Christ the rock and saw all that was in the back of God. You want to know God? Enter the Christ. And at this, come next week, we'll be looking at the following. Don't write them down. The Imago Dei, the Father and the Mother God of Christianity. Is there any Mother God? Yes, in Christianity there is. We'll be looking at the mysteries of the God explanation. The mystery of the Godhead. Is Trinity biblical? Do we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Or we don't? The mystery of the Godhead as explained in the mystery of the Father. The mystery of the Father as explained in the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ as explained in the mystery of the church. The mystery of the church as explained in the mystery of the bride. 
The mystery of the bride, as explained in the mystery of the chaste virgin. The mystery of the chaste virgin, as explained in the mystery of the wife, the virgins, and the concubines. The mystery of the wise and foolish. The mystery of the field. The mystery of the kingdom. The mystery of the kingdom of God. As explained by the kingdom of light and darkness. The mystery of the kingdom of light and darkness. Explained by the mystery of the reconciliation of all things. And the mystery of all the goodness of God. If you know this, you are beginning to know God exhaustively. Hope to see you on Sunday. Pastor Obed, always a blessing.